Welcome to the Awakened Heart Podcast. I'm your host, Nancy Walters. Get ready to create magic and miracles as you lean into your heart's desires. I believe not only does the heart want what it wants, but it knows. This show is a weekly deep dive into what it means to live from an awakened heart. I'll be sharing inspiring stories and real conversations with people just like you who have turned the ordinary into the extraordinary. My mission is to show you how you too can be connected and heart-centered in every area of your life. Your journey to aligning with more love, more joy, and your wildest dreams come true starts now. In this episode, you're going to hear the particular healing modalities that Brooke has found in treating sexual dysfunction, why Western medicine falls short of addressing and treating the root causes of sexual issues, and why healing methods need to address the physical, emotional, and spiritual aspects of sexual dysfunction in order to resolve it. Brooke also demystifies ED in three easy steps. So without further ado, here is today's guest, Brooke Hazen. Hey, Brooke, welcome to the Awakened Heart Podcast. Good to have you on. Thank you, Nancy. Great to be on. Where are you? Where are you in Northern California, right? Yes, right I'm now? in Sebastopol. It's a Russian name, Sebastopol, Sebastopol, California. How far outside of like San Francisco? You're, are you above San Francisco or way north? Yeah, like, I'm above. I'm okay. an hour above San Francisco. Yeah, oh, uh, it mm-hmm. sounds nice, and you've got your own farm and. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. I do. Yeah, yeah, I built it. Built it with my hands since I was got out of college. It's <laughs> amazing. Yeah, it's I think it's wonderful to have, you know, being growing all your own food right now, especially the way the everything's going as far as food and and um, you know, to raise your own stuff. I just actually got my own seeds recently just to keep non-GMO seeds in case it's needed down the road. It's in a little package. But um, we came on here to talk about you just came out with a new book, You Are Not Broken, and you're addressing a big problem that's affecting many men like a majority of men you said 80 percent of men have ed and it's affecting as many as 30 million men it's something that a lot of men don't really talk about and it's like debilitating because they're do they do they talk amongst each other um do you men talk about it like women if we have some kind of feminine issue or problem we talk about it like uh, my guess is no, mm-hmm. um, and uh, corporate corporate control really uh, makes it where men are so so uh, petrified in fear mm-hmm. that um, they're really not in a in a position to talk about it, mm-hmm. and uh, there's really no need for that. There's solutions um, mm-hmm. for it that are simple and easy, and many free. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. yeah. So, but I don't think uh, they talk about it uh, enough. We really mm-hmm. should, because mm-hmm. a lot of people think that we shouldn't talk about sex. That you know, even God doesn't really isn't connected to sex. But God absolutely wants mm-hmm. us to talk about sex and to realize the consequences of our choices. You know, this impacts all areas of our life. Sex is life. It's all mm-hmm. interconnected, and so we should be talking about it openly mm-hmm. and in a relationship too. Yeah, because it's that creative, like it's you, it's creation. You can choose not to create by like protecting yourself so you're not, you know, creating a child. But it's that bonding between men and women. And when it's like when you're really in alignment or in your love, it's such a sacred, it's such a beautiful act. And it's something that, you know, it's been cheapened throughout the years. And as we had discussed before we went live, um, it's on it's on purpose, a lot, a lot of it. So, yeah, yeah. so um, what led you, like, tell us your story. What, how did you begin to find these other modalities um, to help you with this? It, you know, it's debilitating. Uh, well, yeah, before I get into my story, I just want mm-hmm. to talk directly mm-hmm. to you and your listeners and explain that the, um, the book I wrote um, is absolutely equally for men and women. I wrote it in that way and I even have chapters devoted to women. Um, and, um, the healing modalities in my book are women greatly benefit from equally also. So I strongly encourage women to, to 
realize this is all available. I wrote this for you also. Um, I, I do tend to talk a little bit more about men in the podcast and about semen retention. And that's just because there's such an enormous dysfunction with, with men right now because of their sexual behavior choices, but women are not experiencing that sort of dysfunction. And because there are certain differences, you know, with, with semen retention and with the enormous impact that semen release, that, that liquid gold has on men, on their neurology and their body and their mental state, emotional state. Um, and actually later we could talk about how I, I do not, um, I don't, I don't talk, believe at all that uh, women have the same effects with orgasm. I think that orgasm can deepen the relationship when it's in a healthy relationship with bonding behaviors and men are refraining from pornography and practicing semen retention. Mm -hmm. But it's really the reason I talk so much about men is because the statistics are is that 80% uh, of men uh, globally uh, watch pornography at least once a week. And we know that it's more than that because it's it's an escalating addiction, which I'll be getting into, and 26% of women. Um, so this truly is, that, that means that out of eight, eight, 80 million out of 100 million men, if we just take that sample there, are watching pornography once a week or more and engaging in that, in an escalating addiction that's, and we're not recognizing as an addiction. That means this is an epidemic. This is truly the epidemic nobody talks about, the elephant in the room. Nobody's wanting to talk about that impacts our lives so dramatically. And, you know, this is causing men to not be able to open their heart, awaken their heart, and to allow God's light into their into their heart. Um, and so I want to dive, deep dive today into what exactly is going on with men. Um, where are they and what's happening to them? Mm -hmm. And how are they not available in relationship? How can we get them to awaken their heart and to be in relationship? Or how women can traverse this epidemic and know uh, how they can uh, either an existing relationship or uh, any renewing an existing relationship or starting a new relationship, what tools they can have to look for and to strongly request in their in their relationship. Um, but my story started, uh, if you want me to just hop into that yeah. from here, <laughs> uh, the, I don't know if you, do you want me to jump into that? Yeah, no, um, that's a perfect segue. Okay. Uh, so my journey started several years ago. Uh, it was the most unexpected, unbelievable, and beautiful journey that started out as a nightmare uh, when I first started noticing the symptoms of erectile dysfunction. And I do not like using the term erectile dysfunction because it creates a sense of disempowerment and fear around it when nothing could be further from the truth. There, We are fully empowered and there's nothing to be afraid of. It's Western medicine and the pharmaceutical industry that uh, lock us in this uh, archaic state with their draconian measures. And it's Western medicine, the pharmaceutical, the pornographic, and the insurance industries, corporations are the richest on earth. Mm -hmm. And they profit off of our diseases, our dysfunctions, mm -hmm. our imbalances, and our addictions. They, in fact, it, it doesn't profit them in any way to provide real solutions. So they avoid that because that'll make them go out of business and lose their billions of dollars they make. But I actually have discovered through the grace of God, I provide, you know, holistic, curative and preventative solutions for that are simple and easy for all three major forms of ED that I've identified. Um, but at the time, and, and there really is no place for ED today. I want to be so bold to say that there is no place for ED today. There's no place for cardiovascular disease. Again, this is the, the, the injustice that's taking place from Western medicine and pharmaceutical mm -hmm. industry, I have to say. It's a um, medical cartel. Yes, it is. We need to awaken to that so we can look out for ourselves. But at the time when I was experiencing this, I was disempowered and I was terrified. And I reached out to Western Medicine and they gave me what the only tool is they have for erectile dysfunction, which is uh, pharmaceutical ED drugs that target the cardiovascular function of our blood vessels and our endothelial layer. And it jump starts nitric oxide production beyond what we're capable of producing from within. Um, and uh, this causes uh, blood 
in, inducing blood flow to all parts of our body because our body is interlinked, it's inseparable. So this is not just the lingam, but the, the heart, the brain, the muscles, and this is what causes such debilitating side effects. Um, I later found out I had porn-induced erectile dysfunction, mm. the fastest growing segment of ED we see today, predominant form of ED. And um, so I was essentially being misdiagnosed and misprescribed along with millions of men right now with the incorrect drug, blood flow inducing drug when I didn't have any blood flow issues mm. because that's the only solution they, or not even a solution, the only tool they have. Um, so I was actually going carrying such enormous burdens at once. I was, and millions of men are carrying these burdens right now, which is why I wrote this book. I want to help alleviate their suffering because there is a way out that's simple and easy and a lot of it free. Um, so what I was experiencing were several uh, burdens at once. There, I was um, experiencing the scarlet letter of erectile dysfunction, which is with its humiliation, and the overlapping dopamine crashes from my addiction to pornography with the mood imbalance, fatigue, and distancing in the relationship that that causes. And then also this added burden of pharmaceutical EG drugs with their um, debilitating side effects and the exacting and mechanical nature of it and the diminishing and eventually failing effects of it. Um, and during this time, I was going through so much, I was deeply praying to, to God. Uh, I've always been very spiritual and especially during such trying times, I was leaning so hard um, into God for support. And um, I was praying for a either a pharmaceutical or a, even a natural drug which worked and didn't cause side effects. It wasn't a very high bar I was searching <laughs> for. And, and of course, my prayers were never answered and I'm happy they weren't because God had so much more in store for me than just settling for a lifetime prescription of pharmaceutical ED drugs with no plan to regain a natural, healthy, vibrant sexual function ever again. Um, so I was going through these cycles of depression for weeks at a time. It was really scary for me because I didn't know if or when I'd pull out of these cycles of depression. And when the last drug failed, didn't resonate with me, was not working for me, I came to the end of the road. And if you can imagine back then, a few years ago, uh, I didn't know what I knew now. I didn't have the empowerment. I didn't have the tools, the knowledge that I have now. I was all on my own with no plan. It was just myself and God, that was it. And so I prayed deeply to God and let go 100% everything into God's arms and prayed for a healing miracle, a healing miracle over and over. And it was at this time that God decided I was ready and led me on this journey of natural healing, growth, learning, and massive transformation, not only of my sexual health to levels I could have never dreamt of, but my overall physical health, my relational, my mental and emotional health, and showed me how this is all deeply intertwined and interconnected and can never be separated, unlike what Western medicine wants us to believe. Mm -hmm. This letting go is essential to what I talk about in my book and today, letting go of our fears, letting go of the myths and misconceptions, the addictions and negative habits, and the peer pressure that comes from friends, family, society, and especially corporations. By simply letting go of our addiction to pornography and semen release, we allow God's light, healing light, to enter once again into our hearts, body, soul, and for the innate intelligence in every cell of our body to fulfill its mandate, which is to restore perfect balance and health. Um, the first, the miracle that God led me to was Your Brain on Porn by Gary Wilson, which forever transformed my life. Um, and now I understand deeply and profoundly why God led me to this, why this is where God led me for a miracle to transform my life. Because God want, wanted me to profoundly understand and everyone else the enormous power that our sexual behavioral choices have to either create massive dysfunction or massive transformation that's positive 
in all aspects of our life. Um, you know, when we talk, we look at we look at our neurology. We don't talk enough about neurology, but um, you know, regaining a healthy neurology, which is dopamine and our chi sexual energy, is the foundation, the launching pad for transformation in our lives. It unlocks the unlimited potential of our mind. Um, dopamine is uh, our determination, our will, our drive, our motivation to become the ideal beings we're truly meant to be. And she sexual energy is our life force. It's both our sexual and our physical energy. It's what creates new life and it's what creates our own life. When we harness these, we can create massive transformation in our lives, which we're unaware of. You know, we're, we talk about biohacks so much today and to be sure my book is full of, it's one giant biohack. It's biohack after biohack in my book that are amazing. Some of them you never heard of like donating blood and, um, you know, on and on and on through my book. But um, we usually focus on like superfoods and, you know, plants and stuff like that. But we don't realize that, and I want to define biohacking for you, those of you that don't know. Biohacking is uh, using natural techniques to regain our vibrancy, vitality, and youthful vigor, and to reverse biological aging. Um, and, but we don't usually talk about it when it comes to our neurology and our energy. Yet our neurology and our energy, our dopamine, which is being, is in a major addiction now and is being depleted to levels that are chronically low in men and some for women, um, is actually, as well as our chi sex energy, those are the two most potent biohacks on the face of the planet, more powerful than all the pharmaceutical ED drugs put together and all the superfoods put together. And it's what launches us into you know, um, neurologic into sexual, relational, physical potency. <laughs> so we just don't talk about that enough, but we really should. That's where I like to be the most clear um, with people is that, that the power of our neurology and our energy is what we're not honoring and cultivating. And we should. And that's what God wants us to do. Mm -hmm. So it's that chi life force energy. It's like um, it's that Eastern medicine is all about it. Like, do you do acupuncture is about moving the chi energy? Do you, did you do any of the acupuncture with that? Cause I know, um, mm -hmm. it can help treat, um, I it's used to some, go yeah. for the imbalances. Like I used to go for emotional, like just to like had a traumatic breakup. I just did a lot of uh, emotional healing with, um, with acupuncture and it helped really to move that energy around. I know it can help like muscles and all that stuff too, but that's one modality that is good for moving the chi energy. What are some of the modalities for, for moving this energy throughout your body? Well, there's or so activating many myths. It? Um, there's so many myths and acupuncture really is great. I did that, but we tend to focus on things that have nothing to do with the real issue, the real mm -hmm. source of mm -hmm. ED today. And that's mm -hmm. really on purpose. That's Western mm -hmm. medicine. So I have identified three different forms of ED and I want to totally demystify this and, and show people how simple and easy this all is. But the first one is porn induced erectile dysfunction. This is the fastest growing segment of ED. It's a predominant form of ED. And, uh, you know, we're really at the end of a two decade long ex massive experiment on the minds and neurology of the global population. And now we're seeing the results. The results are terrifying. They're harrowing. We're seeing an entire generation of young men who are virgins, unable to have the first sexual experience of their lives in any meaningful relationship. And this is real. I know men that have gone through this. My coach, Noah Church, who's now a leader in this movement, uh, went through this and many hundreds of thousands, possibly millions are going through this right now. We don't talk about it, but this is what's happening. Pornography is destroying neurology relationships and leaving men impotent. Okay, that's what's happening. The second form of ED I see today uh, is what I call energetic ED. This is from releasing our semen too often. And this depletes our chi sexual energy. It causes sexual fatigue. And when we're unable to perform well sexually. 
Um, you know, men in their addiction, they always rationalize away these two, these two forms of ED and the solutions for it. Um, but, and they think it's, these are like fringe behavioral suggestions, but we need to be really real and clear here that these two forms of ED, which is porn induced erectile dysfunction, just neurologically based as an energetic dysfunction through our, our practices that we've been taught in the West, um, are actually, um, two major forms of ED we see today. I believe they are predominant and this is happening on a massive scale. And Western medicine wants to t diverge us away from this and think that we're disempowered um, when actually we're fully empowered. Um, not only are we fully empowered with these two first forms of ED that I identified, we are the only power capable of resolving this. We can, even if we wanna give away our power to the pharmaceutical industry or Western medicine, some doctor in a coat, they cannot resolve that. It's up to each individual in their hearts to make that, to find that drive and determination to resolve this themselves, to quit pornography and semen release, and to wake up to the fact that this is real. This is what's causing the ED and the solution, which is simple, easy, and free, um, which is to refrain from pornography and semen release uh, are actually tried and true solutions that have been practiced for millennia in the East. The third form of ED that uh, I've identified is what we're all familiar with. It's organic ED. It's like physical body ED. Um, and we're all hyper-focused on this and, and brainwashed and trained to go to this every time. Even when I talk about the first two forms of ED, we still go to organic ED every time. And that's on purpose because Western medicine and the pharmaceutical industry, they want us to be afraid. They want to make us have fear. And then they want to have the solution, which is, the, again, the only tool they have is this, what they luckily chanced upon uh, through, uh, by chance, was the, uh, some scientists discovered Viagra. And, uh, you know, that's, they think that's going to resolve everything. But we need to be clear, a pill never replaces true healing, you know, and they are not curing anything. In fact, even the natural supplement industry for ED is mimicking the same pathways that the pharmaceutical ED drugs use, which is boosting nitric oxide production artificially. But they're not actually getting to the root source. And I may be the only one that I'm aware of right now that's offering solutions that are simple and easy for all three, all major forms of ED, the, the neurological, energetic, which are simple and easy and free, but also organic. I don't know anyone that's offering solutions for, there's different types of organic, which we won't go too far into depth today because we want to focus more on relationships, but it's really amazing. I basically found a way to resolve. There's hormonal, which is one, and women and men share the same exact solutions for it, which is bioidentical pellet testosterone re replacement therapy. Um, and it has an enormous benefits for women, which reduces breast cancer, even existing breast cancer tumors, and also all menopausal symptoms. And they get all the same benefits, uh, burning fat, building lean muscle mass, um, and uh, improved sex drive. Uh, women and men share si so many similar uh, traits. And, uh, you know, we have the same cardiovascular system. But when we come to cardiovascular, um, that's what Western medicine, pharmaceutical industry are, are saying it's all blood flow. It's all blood flow. That's not true. It's not all blood flow. In fact, predominantly today, it's not blood flow. We're seeing, again, the fastest rise in ED is neurological. And we'll be getting into that, what neurology is, but we don't talk about that. We depend on our neurology to, to get an erection, to get aroused for women, to get an erection for men. And to maintain that during sex, we must have a healthy neurology in order to make love. And Western medicine doesn't talk about that. They'll never talk about it. So anyways, what I what I did is I asked the question, and I'll talk briefly about it, and then we'll segue into porn-induced erectile dysfunction. But what I did is I asked the, the simple question, okay, if we're, we're spending all this energy and resources to enrich pharmaceutical industry and Western medicine, um, by boosting nitric oxide artificially out above what we're capable of producing within, making us dependent on this, this form of medicine, and it's not even really medicine in my mind, um, every time we want to have sex, I ask the question, 
how can we produce this naturally from within, intelligently from within, so that we can create nitric oxide whenever and wherever we want to, uh, so that we're not dependent on this mechanical, mm -hmm. awkward, uncomfortable process of reaching for a pill and being dependent on that every time we want to get aroused and have sex. It's, it's just so mechanical. Um, how can we get out of that cycle? And I found the solutions. The solutions are basically looking at the source, which is free radical damage to our endothelial system. And again, this is for women too. This is not just men. You need to realize this, but women can benefit in arousal from these techniques too. It's, it's identifying the source. It's free radical damage. So uh, it's sort of a two-pronged approach. It's getting rid of the free radicals that um, are, are causing um, arteriosclerosis because arteriosclerosis is not actually the real problem. Our, our, our liver produces increasing levels of cholesterol whenever there's free radical damage taking place in our, in our endothelial system. And um, this cholesterol goes out of the liver in the form of LDL cholesterol, which is high in wonderful antioxidant, antiviral, anti-inflammatory, and anti-cancer properties. And it goes, it deactivates the free radicals and then it returns to the liver in the form of HDL. There's no bad cholesterol and good cholesterol. The statin industry, which is the richest on earth, wants you to think that there's bad and good. And they're actually essentially blocking us from producing the, you know, the cholesterol. And now the science is showing increased fatalities in elderly from statins with cardiovascular events and cancer. But so our tear sclerosis is made up of a conglomeration of plaque, calcification, and heavy metals. Um, and so without going into too much detail, basically I threw um, calcium EDTA, which is a chelation IV therapy and plaque X IV therapy, which is a soy derived phosphatidylcholine. We're able to actually remove our tear sclerosis. I've actually done it myself. I had mild arterial sclerosis. I did an ultrasound before and after and I removed it. Um, and there's tons of uh, scientific, even government, extensive scientific studies showing the effectiveness of this. Of course, Western medicine does not want you to know this because <laughs> the statin industry is extremely powerful and wealthy and they actively try and block it, which is why you should support your naturopath mm -hmm. um, and these therapies. We need to demand it. Um, and I recommend doing IVs with a naturopath rather than an IV room because uh, it's, it's safer. It's the protocols are safer and sanitation and osmolarity. And, um, but the second part is then changing our lifestyle, uh, mainly our diet, you know, to a plant-based diet, but not just any old plant-based diet, but a intelligent one, you know, that um, where we are using whole, you know, organic fruits, vegetables, nuts, seeds, and um, whole grains and little to no, ideally no processed flours and processed foods and sugars. We have to watch sugars and um, also um, soft drinks. Um, and, you know, basically we could be junk food vegans um, easily. So that's why this is very important. The science shows that for sexual health and overall physical health, these are completely inextricable. Our, our tear sclerosis is blood flow restrictive ED. It's the same thing. Mm -hmm. It shows us how the body, how the physical body and our sexual health are completely inseparable. In fact, our sexual health is just a result of increased energy and vitality in our physical body. And that in turn causes healthy sex drive. Um, in fact, with, with the hormone replacement therapy with testosterone, um, it's not that we, Western medicine wants, there's this myth that we take a pill or we take something and it just makes our sexual area strong. That's not how it works. Uh, with hormone therapy, it makes it with testosterone. I don't recommend estrogen therapy for men or women, for women mainly, I don't recommend it. But um, it, what it does is it increases our physical energy and then in turn that increases our sexual energy. That's how that works. The testosterone. Um, the testosterone okay. increase, and women actually make 20 times more testosterone than estrogen. They they have that in their body, and they make all their estrogen from their testosterone. 
And so there's really no need to take estrogen. A lot of the old studies showed um, that discouraged women from, and I was so excited to, to discover this in my, my journey and my research, um, was that uh, women uh, actually uh, simply need to, all they need to do is take the testosterone pellet replacement therapy uh, and they can produce estrogen naturally from within from that. But the, the synthetic estrogen in those old studies is what discouraged women from hormone replacement therapy, which was totally wrong. We need to be talking about the reality, the science of, of how we can all uh, regain health and vitality. And so women have been denied from this because of a faulty old study, another mm -hmm. myth. You know, there's, that's why I say we need to get rid of the myths mm -hmm. and the misconceptions. We have to look at the science. And my book absolutely is backed up by the science. You know, it's got 111 scientific studies to back it all up. Scientists that are raising the alarm bells and the red flags and trying to enlighten us. But Western medicine, the pharmaceutical industry keeps uh, uh, keeps uh, us in the dark. And, and, and that's also because we allow them to, you know, we, we are allowing them when, whenever we give credence to a, a person that has a white, a white coat and a, a label on it, a name on it, we're giving the, our power away to them when we need to start looking out for ourselves because mm -hmm. they are not, they are mm -hmm. making us ill. They're killing us. They're creating dysfunction, disease, their life, they never talk about lifestyle changes because that doesn't provide, uh, mm -hmm. they don't want to provide solutions. They, they, they only provide two elements, which is pharmaceuticals and surgeries. That's it. Mm -hmm. You will not get any actual holistic, curative and preventative healing modalities at all. Any solutions, any looking at the core causes, the real reasons, they will not allow you to do that. They don't even want you to do it. They want to mm -hmm. block you from doing that. So we have to take it upon ourselves and completely throw out everything that we've heard mm -hmm. and start anew. And that's what I encourage people to do. And what your podcast is about is, you know, awakening our heart mm -hmm. fresh and new and starting on a new journey um, with a fresh mind, you know, mm -hmm. strip ourselves bare and, you know, challenge ourselves. Like we just don't challenge ourselves enough today. We're so used to getting everything handed to us, provided to us at our fingertips. And we're not, we don't realize that sacrifice and challenge, letting go, letting go of these addictions, letting go of the fears, letting go of these habits is what, where we actually gain vibrancy and vitality. Letting go of our blood. I mean, donating blood once a year even uh, reduces the chance of heart attack by 88%. Wow. And that, why aren't, why isn't Western medicine talking about that? Because mm -hmm. they don't want a solution. They want to keep people on statins, on surgeries. And they don't want people to know about chelation IV therapy, about how effective that is, plaque X IV therapy. They want to get rid of that because it's a threat. Mm -hmm. So anyways, I went way more into organic ED than I planned. <laughs> well, I just, I think it's so, what you're saying here is so relevant because I think so many of us, myself included, over the last two years with this, uh, what's been thrown in our face and there was no, it, it would have been a great time for two years to talk about vitamin D and getting this, getting sunshine on your, uh, what we can do to make our, our immune systems healthy uh, what can we make ourselves stronger and how can we unify and and you know get through this together but it was all about division it was about masking it's about sanity like none of it and we've seen all these people that are talking out against it how they're being censored mm, and they're yeah, not allowed absolutely. to talk about you know all these there there are therapies that worked <laughs> and inexpensive therapies and they were vilified and censored and losing their jobs i mean it's so apparent yeah that yes. the FDA is a farce, CDC is a joke. Um, I don't trust hospitals, a lot of us don't anymore. And and and, and we it, we have so much power within ourselves to heal ourselves, you know, with, yeah. like you say, yeah. with God or the universe, you know, with, with um, faith in something, you know, higher than ourselves and ourselves, we're our own heroes. We're the ones that are going to save ourselves. Nobody else is going to save us. Medical industry is just making money off us. They want to keep us sick. So yes. the more people that awaken to the truth are going to be able to, like yourself, heal themselves or find yeah. other, other yeah. ways. 
Well, that's the problem. We need to realize we're living in a corporatocracy and mm -hmm. that big pharma is one of the biggest players in that corporatocracy. And it's just a chain of power that's political also. Mm -hmm. And uh, we really have witnessed one of the most uh, ingenious, uh, you know, mental heists um, that I've witnessed in my mm -hmm. lifetime. Um, but anyways, uh, I don't like to focus so much on organic ED again, because this is, we should view this more as a, um, a way to, some people have organic ED. Yes. Um, they have blood flow issues. They have hormonal issues. That's, that's great. We can resolve that. But, um, and this is really, we should look at it more as a way to increase our sexual performance rather than a, this scarlet letter that it, that they vilify, that they terrify us with in Western medicine, that men are terrified in submission with right now, that they won't even talk about it because they don't have a solution. So that's why I'm providing the solution so we can focus on the real solutions rather than, you know, what they're saying, oh, well, it's blood flow. And then it's it's uh, also, it's psychological. It's because you're unable to get an erection. So that creates a cycle. No, that's not what creates the cycle. The cycle is created because you're not providing real solutions. Mm -hmm. And I am. So I'm providing real solutions. <laughs> <laughs> and it's kind of amazing that an organic farmer who three years ago was wasn't sure how to eat, if I'd even have a vi vibrant sexual function again, is now the, been through the grace of God now has these solutions mm -hmm. uh, available to everyone to to realize are here. There's really no place for ED and cardiovascular disease today. We have the tools. It's out there. And that's why. I, on this podcast, we're getting this information out, mm -hmm. but I like to focus more on like the real, you know, the, we need to start with the core, the core where we must start, because even if we resolve or which they don't do, but if we, let's say they luck out and they identify someone that has organic blood flow ED and they just happen to get someone that has that. Okay. Well, if you don't resolve the porn induced ED and the energetic source of ED from semen release too much, then you're not going to resolve the ED. Uh, so that's why we have to look at everything holistically. This is holistic. And they don't have any idea what to do right now with the fastest growing segment of ED today. Porn induced erectile dysfunction and, and semen release. These are all behaviors we've been brainwashed. Men have been trained to believe that in the West, this is how we act. In the East, they're well aware of the, the, the power of our sexual choices, our behavioral choices. But porn-induced erectile dysfunction, it's a neurologically based form of ED, um, and it is an arousal displacement dysfunction, is what I call it. Um, this means that uh, for me, uh, what I had was I was able to get aroused to my favorite pornography, but not to a real live connected partner in front of me. I started noticing I couldn't. And that's the arousal displacement. That's a desensitization process, which is an escalating addiction um, that causes eventually for so many hundreds of thousands of men, even millions, eventually can get to the point where they very commonly cannot get aroused to their favorite pornography. I luckily caught it before it got to that point, but when you get to the point where you cannot even get aroused to your favorite pornography, you have become impotent to life itself. You are Your dopamine is so crashed that you cannot get aroused to life, to a partner, and even pornography. <laughs> um, and this truly is an, a dopamine addiction. The science has shown that uh, dopamine levels and receptors in porn users is depleted to the same chronically low levels experienced by cocaine and morphine addicts. In fact, the brain cannot even differentiate between a physical addiction to a drug and a neurological addiction to the super stimulus of pornography. Pornography is a super stimulus for two main reasons. It combines two main elements that are important to understand. The first is the, um, the novelty. It's the constant novelty at our fingertips. It's endless that we can select for each individual's uh, neuro neurological arousal pathways. Um, combined with the second element, and this is important, it's semen release. That's what makes it a super stimulus, combining those two elements. Um, so I use the term semen release rather than ejaculation on purpose. Uh, in, in Tantra, we practice 
regularly what is called full body orgasm ejaculation without semen release. This is mm -hmm. where the entire body, including the lingam, has an orgasm and ejaculates. It shakes in ecstasy, but we're simply blocking the semen from being released because it's, uh, it's, it's like liquid gold and I'll be getting into this next, but in the East, they've been aware for millennia. It's just in the West that we're naive of the immense toll that semen release takes on a male. The moment that semen is released and a male will undergo an intense mental, neurological, and physical refractory period and a process of replenishment in which dopamine levels crash and prolactin levels rise. Prolactin is linked with fatigue and with even hair loss. Um, and the body goes through a process of pulling all the most precious resources of growth factors, hormones, and nutrients to replace the vital sperm. And so this all causes fatigue, mood imbalance, and distancing. It's most intense for solidly for the first three days, but science shows that it actually weaves up and down this process of fatigue, you know, all this mood imbalance, the refractory period, the dopamine crashes, prolactin rising, weaves up and down for up to two weeks. Wow. Uh, so some of the largest reverberations are happening at the tweak level. Now, after I can one? tell you, after, after one? just one. And wow. so that's, that's where we need to realize the reality is that I can tell you from my own experience, when I was watching pornography, I was releasing my semen and I have talked to all men who verify the same thing, not just once every two weeks, not even usually once every few days. It's usually once a day, sometimes even more. Um, and so what this means is we're that on a massive scale, because almost all men are engaging in pornography today. Most men, eight out of 10, you know, eight billion out of 10 billion. Uh, if, uh, we don't have that many on the planet, but you get the gist. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's so a lot of them. Eight out of 10 on a massive level are, um, are experiencing overlapping dopamine crashes and entering a perpetual state of chronic fatigue, mood imbalance, anger, irritability, and a total inability to connect in the relationship. You know, we, we don't, you know, we would never think twice about someone who's a cocaine or morphine addict. We wouldn't be surprised at all if the, we wouldn't expect them at all to be able to be at peak sexual performance, to be fully connected in their relationship, fully available emotionally and mentally, communicatively, you know, to be at their, their peak physical conditioning. We wouldn't expect that with a cocaine or morphine addict, would we? Mm -hmm. Yet we, we don't realize this is exactly the same effect, the same addiction, the same de depleting effects that are they're happening on a massive level culturally, globally right now with men. And we don't realize we're essentially dealing with a majority of men in a cocaine or morphine addiction, if you will. And that's what's causing this relationship dysfunction. And I just want to, I know I'm talking a lot, but I wanted to also talk about how fascinating the brain is. That the brain actually, um, even though men uh, and women, when, when we... Um, are conscious that we're engaging in a fantasy when we look at pornography and engage in pornography. Every time we release our semen to these pornographic images, the brain actually believes this is real. The brain actually believes that we're waging a highly successful campaign of mating with a wide range of sexy novel mates. Mm. And this is the very definition of mating behavior, which we'll be getting into mating and bonding behaviors. But mating behavior is um, spreading maximum maximum genetic diversity through novel mate selection. Now that sounds very archaic and reptilian to me. That really holds no place in a modern relationship. Yet men are perfecting and practicing uh, these mating behaviors to toxic levels, toxic behaviors. Um, you know, women's fears are absolutely backed by the science. Their intuition is absolutely correct. We're absolutely, uh, men are absolutely totally unavailable for relationship because they're in a massive addiction. They are um, replacing real connective partners literally on every level, neurologically, mentally, physically, emotionally, 
sexually with pixels on a screen, with a fantasy. They are pixel by pixel replacing real connected partners with a fantasy, which ultimately leaves them completely empty. And um, anyways, I wanna talk about semen retention and semen release next, um, but that sort of is what I wanted to really get you to understand about porn induced erectile dysfunction and how powerful it is. So that recovery period where you, you were saying it could take three days or even a week, that is just from watching pornography and that kind of release, or is it when you're in a sexual act, it could take that long to recover? Like when you're actually yeah. in a sexual so that's, act with that's why these are their own forms of, of ED and, their, and, the, and what I'm gonna talk about next is how they impact relationships too. Mm -hmm. I mean, obviously both of them impact relationships, pornography and semen release. Uh, this mating and what's happening is men are actually taking these these toxic mating behaviors that they're practicing and, and perfecting and they're transposing that into the relationship. Um, and so, yeah, this this semen release actually uh, becomes a mating behavior in the relationship where um, men are increasingly focused on the singular goal driven act of climactic driven semen release and this creates um distancing and satiety in the relationship where this mammalian brain this archaic brain you know uh, we we also have bonding behaviors to help um, help with this but this mammalian brain is actually believes it's been successful at procreating with one partner and is now subconsciously um looking at new novel partners in order to spread that maximum genetic diversity and Again, this is unconscious, this is subconscious. These sub, these unconscious behaviors that men are reacting to, that they've been brainwashed to, is what's creating massive dysfunction. We need to get conscious of, of it. And that's kind of what I want to talk about next is, is semen retention and semen release. Um, so again, semen retention, semen release is the second major form of ED we see today. It's not just a suggestion. This is a major epidemic, and, and um, this nothing brings up more fear in men than when I use the word semen retention and semen release. It's because men believe that they're they'll lose the satisfaction they're getting from releasing their semen, um, when actually through their pornography and addiction and their semen release addiction, um, they're actually um, getting to the point where they're pushing themselves further and further away from. The true reality that they think they're in um they're they're actually by depleting their dopamine drive and determination their you know all the qualities that come from semen retention from you know their magnetism their mental acuity their emotional balance their ability to communicate and connect and to perform sexually they're actually repelling women they're actually doing the opposite of what they think they're doing and then they're actually getting less satisfaction sexually they think they're getting satisfaction, but they're getting less and less. So it's actually a total paradox. Semen retention is a paradox because as the chi sexual energy and the dopamine levels return, you know, return, and the chi sexual energy returns to the sexual parts of our body, we experience increased sensitivity, increased satisfaction, increased sexual performance and potency and prolongment. We're actually, we're, again, men are, unconsciously releasing their semen after the average of three to five minutes. This is leaving women wholly unsatisfied and actually perturbed um, and distancing in the relationship. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, so we can actually prolong it now to where, you know, 30, 50 minutes rather than three to five minutes. Wow. That's not important. What's important is it's whatever is in alignment with your partner. Now, women, as you know, I'm not going to lecture women, but I'm really talking to men here that we need to wake up that women are just getting aroused at the moment that you're finished and yeah. distancing, actually pulling away. You're not just yep. finished. You're actually pulling away, leaving them completely isolated and unsatisfied. Mm -hmm. So now we can get an alignment and we can, we can slow it down, smell the flowers um, and, you know, um, experience, you know, fuller embodiment, deeper connection and start seeing this as a dance 
you know, that brings us closer to God rather than a singular goal-driven act of not just sex, but even just semen release is the only goal and climax is the only goal. You know, even men need to get to the point where they're not addicted to just sex, where if sex happens, great. If it doesn't happen, we actually had to go through a process of, you know, getting um, used to being totally fine with that and taking that energy that we're so not used to knowing what to deal with, this excess, beautiful energy that comes from our sexual, physical potency, our chi energy, and transmuting that into the, the relationship, into deeper connection, bonding behaviors, but also your passions in life, success as they do in the East, you know? But the most important benefit of semen retention of all is avoiding the dopamine crash, avoiding the distancing, mood imbalance, um, fatigue, avoiding, you know, all these aspects that are incredibly poisonous, they undermine and ultimately destroy even the best matched, well-intentioned partners. Learn more about that and much, much more on the next episode of the Awaken Heart Podcast. Thank you for listening to this week's episode of the Awaken Heart Podcast. If you've enjoyed what you've heard today, share it with a friend. And if you haven't already, head on over to your favorite podcast app to subscribe, rate, and review. If you have any comments, questions, or feedback, you can reach me at the awakenheartpodcast.com.